What's up guys, it's MCJ, Matt Collins Jones here, and I'm back with another video, and this time we're doing a reaction video. You may have seen reaction videos on the internet, they are everywhere, you can find them on people reacting to um, new things, people reacting to old things, kids reacting, adults reacting, divers reacting, you can find loads of reaction videos. I thought I would do a reaction video based on the wave uh, the Wave 1 of 2022's release notes for the PAL platform. I'm going to do a separate video on the Dynamics 365 uh, release notes as well, but I thought I would do the PAL platform one first. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through some of my top picks for the release notes for this upcoming Wave, which is uh, which the release notes came out yesterday, uh, and we will, uh, or a couple of days ago now, and we will go through and, and just react to some of my favorite features. Uh, and I've got some honorable mentions at the end as well. So let's jump into it. So the first one that, uh, that really um, jumped out at me uh, was this one. They quickly create tables and load data in Dataverse based on existing data. Firstly, that's quite a mouthful. Um, secondly, uh, that sounds awesome. Uh, the idea that you can quickly create a table, you can load data in based on data that you already have. Uh, previously, if you work with Dataverse, you'd have to um, build a table, then get a, a data import and put it in. So looking at this uh, feature, what this is, is this is bringing the Dataverse for Teams edit table and add table components straight into Dataverse which is awesome. It's been a feature that we really liked in Dataverse Teams, but we've not had in full-blown Dataverse so far. Um, so we can see from the from the preview screenshot that it looks a lot like the table editor inside of Dataverse for Teams. Um, we can um, quickly uh, and, and easily add data in line. We can add new, t new columns in line um, so you don't have to jump back and forth and save your changes. You can just create it all in line uh, and do it just like you do in Dataverse for Teams. Also says that new tables can be created by uploading a, an Excel spreadsheet containing the table. So you could format your data into a table in an Excel spreadsheet with all the um, column names that you need. It will dynamically pick up the right um, data type based on the I don't know, formatting of the formatting of the data or things in the data. And they'll use Power Query to then run through, uh, create that table for you and import that data at the same time. That's going to be a lifesaver. I have, I've worked on so many projects over the last 10 years uh, where I've had to create data tables and then import data. And then as you go back to the data, you realize that although the trustman told you it was a string, it's actually a number or you know, it's this or it's that, always a nightmare. Um, this should really help speed up development. So that was the first thing that I saw when I looked at these release notes and thought that's going to be a great feature going forward. Next up, uh, we're getting a bit devy now. Uh, PowerFX named formulas to ease development and improve performance. So PowerFX is the name for the um, the coding language that is used in Canvas apps. We're now also seeing it in the in model driven apps in the uh, app the command designer. And this feature is really great. So. Um, what this feature is, is it's the ability to just name a formula. So previously, if you had a formula, you'd have to use variables or global variables or collections, uh, and you would um, you set these things, you'd collect these things, and you'd set them, and then you could use that somewhere else. Um, this was fine, but instead of using that, uh, instead of using that um, notational time, set this or update uh, context that, um, we can actually just say the formula, so um, name of the formula equals something. So the example that you have here is instead of someone writing set x last accounts, looking at the last um, row in the accounts, they'll write x equals last accounts. So though it's not really saving you too much time um, by removing the, the set, it's a subtle yet powerful change is exactly what they write right here, subtle yet powerful change. Um, so it, it means that we can write things easier. It means that citizen devs won't have to think about um, the, the uh, formulas all the time. You can literally just say this equals this. Um, I think this is a great improvement, especially for people that aren't used to coding. So, so the low code developer, uh, which is what I'm calling myself these days, um, is, a, is a great way to 
um, you know, improve this product and improve this, uh, this language. Next one, this is one I was really excited about. Uh, we're in Power Automate section now. Uh, this is handle null values in JSON. Um, if you've ever, if you've ever worked with uh, pars in JSON uh, and you've uh, potentially come up against something that either isn't there or um, something that comes back as a null value, you can understand how much of a pain it is. Um, this is especially true if you work with things like the SQL connector because the SQL connector, um, if things are are null it, and you and you're still pulling back that. Um, still pulling back that data through the store procedure, it will just throw an error and it'll be a nightmare. Um, the way you fix that is when you get your JSON schema, you actually have to go in and edit it and then make sure that everything can be this or null, this or null. And that's just a real pain, especially if you have hundreds of fields um, and you've created your JSON schema in the easy way, like I showed you up here. Um, but yeah, this is this is a great feature. So what this will do is, when you're when you're parsing JSON, if your um, if your data does not have a value, if it is null, um, and I guess if it's not a required field somewhere else, it won't throw the error in the JSON. It will just handle that null value and just carry on. Um, so that's a really great feature and something that I think a lot of makers have been shouting out for. Um, speaking of something that people have been shouting out for resubmit multiple failed flows, failed runs at once. Um, so this again is Power Automate, this is Cloud Flows, and this is the ability to select multiple failed flows from your run history and resubmit them all at the same time. The current feature today is you have to click into a failed run, you then have to click resubmit, and then you have to keep doing that for all of your different, um, all of your different flows. This is very time consuming, the flow run history um, screen is not always that great. Um, you can sometimes lose your place or other things can happen. So this is the ability to do select multiple and hit resubmit, something that people have been asking for for a long time. Next up, we have start bot conversations with proactive triggers. So this is for Power Virtual Agents. Uh, Power Virtual Agents is a fantastic tool uh, a fantastic platform to build bots on uh, and one of the things that's been missing for so long is the ability to just start a proactive conversation or, or start a, a, a trigger proactively. Previously you'd have to um, like uh, specify and go to the bot and say yes hey can you tell me this or hey can you do that. Um, what this trigger or this feature allows you to do is instead of having to interact with the bot first and, and hit that triggering phrase, you can proactively talk to the user that's on the page with the bot and tell them something. And it's even better, it says, in this way we'll add the ability for your customers to proactively trigger bot conversations with their full context. That's important. With their full context means that based on this, you can actually get information about the user beforehand send it to the user. So the example they give here is um, you previously asked a bot how many vacation days do I have left? But, in, but using a proactive trigger, the bot may just pop up when they're on the screen and say, you have three days left to pick your benefits, can I answer any questions? Or you have three days left to, to submit your holiday request before the next financial year. Um, this will really help drive that bot conversation forward with people. I, it's something that's been missing for PVA for quite a while uh, and I'm really happy for Microsoft to bring this in. Um, I do have a couple of honorable mentions that I'll go through really quickly um, before the end of the video. So the first one is Power Apps. Um, Power Apps application on Windows running model driven and Canvas apps support with full support for offline. Something that um, it has been a, a pain point for a while is that the Windows app for Power Apps is not on parity with iOS and Android, so and therefore it does not support offline. Uh, we are now getting that feature in Wave 2. Support for data sources with Dynamic Streamers. Again, this is PowerFX or Power Apps. Um, this is the ability to, um, to actually collect data in where the schema may change. Um, and this is important because sometimes over time things change and then you have to go back and update your apps. This will handle all that dynamic schema 
for you a really great um, a really great thing it says this feature is enabled for use of support for SQL store procedures in the future that's a really great addition uh, UI improvements to business process flows this is something people have been asking for for a long time undo feature in a Cloudflow designer Again, another great feature. Uh, we have now a undo button that you can um, you can press to just undo the last change. Uh, there's also a redo button to redo the last change. So some great features there. So there we have it. That is my reaction to the Power Platform uh, release notes for Wave One of 2022. Um, all these things will be coming over the next few months. Um, you will start to see them drop into your environments. Um, you can enable um, your environments for these previews um, if applicable. Um, some will have public previews, some will have early access, some just have general availability. Um, so we won't, we won't be able to see all these features right now, but that is uh, just the way it works with, with Microsoft and the new features. So what do you guys think? Uh, what is your favorite feature in the Power Platform release notes? Let me know in the comments down below. And uh, if you haven't already, click the subscribe button, hit the bell, drop a like, hit comment, do all the things, share me on socials, and I'll see you in the next one.